Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining. Welcome to our news conference today. A reminder to the reporters on the line, please press star one to enter the queue. You will be limited to one question and one follow-up. I will now hand it over, over the sounds of some airplanes here at Abbotsford Airport, to the Minister of Public Safety and Solicitor General, Mike Farnworth. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike Farnworth, Minister of Public Safety and Solicitor General for British Columbia. And today I'm speaking with you from the traditional territory of the Stowe peoples uh, here in Abbotsford. I just had the opportunity and pleasure to welcome to British Columbia 100 firefighters who are joining us from Mexico. And it was a real pleasure on behalf of the people of this province to be able to say, Buenas tardes, bomberos valientes, y bienvenidos a Canada. These highly trained crews will be on hand for 30 days, working shoulder to shoulder with our wild fire service crews. We can't thank these men and women enough for heeding our call for support. After clearing customs, they are heading to nearby air tanker base to undergo rapid COVID-19 testing and meet with BC wildfire representatives and Mexico's consular general. Soon they will travel to the interior to get to work and join thousands of other British Columbians fighting the fires. The province will continue to do everything possible as we have from the start to source additional firefighting resources to protect communities. Since early July, Canadian Armed Forces aircraft have been aiding as needed in evacuations and providing airlift support to transport personnel, supplies and equipment. And just yesterday, the first contingent of the Canadian Forces wildfire ground crews arrived in Vernon to debrief and receive their tasks more are arriving through the midweek. Currently, we also have out-of-province crews and resources from Alberta, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Quebec, and parts Canada. The details of these deployments are being finalized now and more information will be available in the coming days. For now, we continue to face difficult fire behavior and conditions throughout the central and southern interior. Similar, challenging weather is forecast for the foreseeable future. Our provincial and contract crews have been working hard and the assistance we're seeing from Mexico and others is a welcome relief to all British Columbians. We will see the other side of this fire season, but we need to continue to work together to take care and to stay safe. Thank you. You can now take questions. Thank you very much, Minister. A reminder to all the reporters on the line, please press star one to enter the queue. You will be limited to one question and one follow-up. For our first question, we'll start here at the airport with Amada Gahi, Global News. Thanks so much. I, I just watched uh, yourself uh, welcome every single one of these firefighters and you waited till they all came down. So just maybe can you tell us the importance of what's happening here and their arrival and how much help they will be able to provide? I can't tell you enough how much it means to us um, in British Columbia, I think for everyone, that we are receiving help from outside of our province, across Canada, and internationally. Um, the crews here from Mexico are top rate, uh, incredibly uh, uh, skilled at the job they're going to do, and uh, we are so very, very pleased. Uh, we cannot thank the, uh, the Mexican government enough uh, for, uh, for assisting us. Um, one of the things that, um, as you know, um, we don't just rely on people here uh, fighting fires in British Columbia, but we get people from across Canada uh, and internationally. That's coordinated through the interagency uh, uh, fire center in Winnipeg, and uh, we're really pleased they're here. And as you know, in the, uh, the fire season in other jurisdictions, we often send our firefighters down there. So it's a, a terrific reciprocal arrangement we've got, and we're so great, very, very grateful they're here. Maybe provide any update if there are more additional firefighters that you're working, uh, government is working to bring in as the fires are, are exploding in, in some areas of the province. What I can tell you right now is there are about 275 fires uh, in British Columbia. Uh, almost 3,200 uh, uh, men and women are fighting those fires on the ground. There's 
uh, about 200 aircraft fighting those fires. Uh, we've just received the 100 uh, uh, firefighters from Mexico today. Uh, last week, um, we had confirmation from the federal government that they're sending out an additional uh, 350 Canadian Armed Forces to assist uh, in terms of the, uh, the mopping up uh, of fires that are, being, that are brought under control. And then, of course, we will continue to, uh, to work with our, our partners at the interagency, as well as internationally, to, uh, to obtain other firefighters uh, when we can. Now we'll go back to the phone lines. Our next question comes from Marie Ziedler, CBC. Hi, Minister Farnworth. Um, we've been hearing from a lot of evacuees in the interior that there are no hotels for them to stay at. Um, I'm wondering if you could speak to that in terms of what the province's plans are for housing evacuees. Uh, in Kamloops, uh, hotel space is limited, and Kamloops is not able at this point to take any more evacuees. But there are 21 reception centers around the province uh, that are able to uh, to take evacuees. Uh, we've been working with uh, local governments to ensure that there is uh, a space uh, space in communities. So, for example, while there may not be space uh, in Kamloops, in that if you're in the Kamloops area, uh, there are uh, places uh, in Kamloops, or sorry, in uh, Kelowna. Uh, and Prince George, um, um, Williams Lake, uh, and uh, Spences Bridge, for example, uh, are some of the communities that have reception uh, centers. There are also reception centers as far away as Chilliwack. We are working with communities to ensure that there is a, uh, there enough space. There are currently right now about uh, just over 4,100 people uh, who have been evacuated, uh, and we are ensuring that they have places to stay. Maurice, do you have a follow-up? I do. We're, we're also hearing concerns specifically from evacuees who need accommodations um, who have disabilities. And I'm wondering what the province has done to uh, find accommodations specifically for, for people with mobility uh, challenges. So when someone registers uh, with the emergency social services uh, and, uh, and a Red Cross that uh, they've been evacuated under an evacuation order, for example, uh, one of the things that, uh, that now takes place and is an improvement over the, uh, the 2017 situation when you had to register by paper is you can now register online uh, and, one of the, and, and it goes through a whole series of categories. So if you're a person uh, who requires, uh, uh, has, has special needs, disability needs, for example, or accessibility uh, issues, that's taken down right at that point and then they will do everything they can to assure that, uh, that there is uh, appropriate accommodation available for you. Okay, for the next question, we go to Rob Drinkwater, Canadian Press. Hi. Uh, given that it's such a challenge finding places for evacuees to stay, where will these uh, firefighters that we're bringing in from, from outside of uh, BC and, and from outside of Canada, where do they stay? Is it hard finding a place for, to put them up? Uh, they stay at fire camps out near where the uh, the fires are. Rob, do you have a follow up? Uh, yeah, are you uh, are you negotiating with other countries uh, to get more firefighters in, and, and and how challenging is that given the the severity of fire situations in other countries? No, we are well aware that there are some um, you know severe uh, fire situations in other in other countries. Um, you know whether it's. Uh, whether it's the United States, we're seeing the fires in Oregon and, and California. Uh, but uh, we work through the, uh, the interagency, the central interagency based in Winnipeg to uh, resource uh, firefighters uh, from other parts of Canada uh, and also internationally. And we continue to do that uh, for as long as, uh, as, as we need to. And for our last question, we go to Mary Brooks with Island Social Trends. Mary, please go ahead. Yeah, my question is about the um, firefighters coming in from Canadian Armed Forces. Uh, you just said that they're arriving to Vernon, and on Thursday we were told that it's about 250, and, and now you said there's also 350 coming in from Alpha. So is the total six hundred, um, the ones that are arriving in Vernon today, what sort of tasks are they being assigned to? Thanks. The total that I'm aware of at this point is that there will be 350. So, as I said, there is a, a, a one detachment has arrived in Vernon, and then, as I, in my remarks, I said there was others coming later this week. Um, so, what the uh, those tr what the Canadian Armed Forces troops do is they engage in what are are um, either. Um, mopping up um, fires, so the fires that have been brought under control, uh, they will go and do a mopping up of hot spots. Uh, that's the work that they will be doing, and uh, so we're very pleased that uh, that they are uh, in Vernon, and that there will also be more coming uh, uh, later this week. Mary, do you have a follow-up? Oh, that's good. Thank you. Thank you, 
very much, everyone. I would like to invite the Consul General Mexico, Ana Berenice Diaz de Baos Parada, to go up to the podium. We'd like to take some photographs. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, everyone. That concludes today's event. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay, if I take a couple of photos here. Yeah, can I get closer also? Okay. Thank you.